Hey, what is going on guys? In today's video, we're doing a full general slash graphic settings guide for ECFN season seven. So we'll cover the video tab, we'll cover the game tab with some important settings for both keyboard and controller players. And then we'll talk about the accessibility tab with visualized sound effects in season seven. Now, if you're interested in controller settings, I do have a video on that. You can check my settings guide playlist on my channel and you can find the EZFN controller settings guide there as we won't be covering controller settings in today's video. And with that, let's start out with the video settings. So really with graphics, you have to make a decision for yourself. Do you want the, to be as competitive as possible in the game and sacrifice visual quality to gain competitive advantages? Do you want to make the game look as nice as possible and give up those competitive advantages? Or do you want to be somewhere in between? Now, all those are perfectly valid, but it's going to change up the way you want to configure your graphics settings. On um, these top three here, it's pretty much going to be not really going to be dependent on that. You can either go into full screen or full screen. If you're only using Fortnite, you're not tapping in and out. Full screen may give you, you know, fix some issues with FPS. You might find it's a little bit faster as the description says, but if you need to tap in and out a lot, I recommend window full screen. I'd set the display resolution to your native monitor resolution because if you're having FPS problems, you can always turn down your 3D resolution. What this does is it basically makes the user interface, like your inventory and all that, uh, full resolution. And since that doesn't take that much processing power relative to the actual game world, you can just keep it at the native resolution. Unless you want to use stretch, in which case that may create some complications there. But assuming you're running native, just keep it at your normal resolution. And then frame rate limit, if you're finding that you can get really good FPS and like you're on a 60 hertz monitor, um, you may find that you can reduce input latency. I found when I ran a 60 hertz monitor for a little bit that setting it to 120 made the game feel more responsive. But given I already have a 144 hertz monitor and I'm not really able to push more than 144 FPS into manic situations anyway, like a build fight, I just kind of leave it capped at 144. But that, you know, you can tr experiment with that. It really is going to depend on how fast your PC is and what your monitor refresh rate is. So 3D resolution, I would keep this on max unless you're having FPS problems, in which case you can turn it down a little bit to help out. And then view distance. If your PC can run it, I'd recommend you set this as high as you can, no matter you want to be as competitive as possible or you want to make the game look as nice as possible. Reason why is because although this may not make players render further away, it may make builds render further away or make the general environment render. And this can be important as something like, for example, you're flying a plane towards hotel and you see that hotel has been completely destroyed. With epic view distance, you see that it has been destroyed further away. And that can be helpful as you may know, okay, someone dynamited that building. Maybe I want to go over there and check or maybe I'm shambles and I want to fly away, right? So that can be an advantage and I recommend setting it to epic if your PC can run it. Shadows, I only recommend you use if you're going for visual quality over competitive advantage, as this setting is going to give you the biggest competitive disadvantage. Even going to medium is going to result in your enemies being a lot harder to see in certain environments where, you know, they're covered by a shadow. So if you want to be competitive, keep it off. But if you want to make the game look nice, of course, you can turn it on. And these four here are not too big of a disadvantage. Yes, they may lower your FPS, but overall, if you want to set these to epic, I don't really see a problem with that as long as you... Um, your PC can run it. This is not going to give you that much of a disadvantage. So my general guide is if you want to make it everything look as nice as possible, set everything as high as your PC can run it. If you want a middle ground, I would keep shadows off, but then set these other settings higher. And if you want to be as competitive as possible, I'd go epic view distance, low everything else. Okay, VSync, I recommend for everybody, VSync is off. As you can see in the description, it does say that it could increase your input latency. So I recommend that you keep it off. You don't want to introduce more input latency. Uh, motion blur, I also recommend you keep off. If it, the game looks nicer to you, sure, you could run it. But you're making your game more blurry. You're making your enemies more blurry. Don't recommend that unless you really like the way it looks. And then finally, show FPS, I recommend you keep on just so you can see what's going on. Okay, let's move into our general settings now. So set language, whatever works for you. Matchmaking region, one quick note here, solos I found have been playable on NA and EU, but if you wanna play duos, I recommend you go EU, as there's a lot more players there, um, usually around 5X more at least. Okay, we're not gonna cover sensitivity today, but we are gonna cover a few important settings that are applicable to keyboard and controller players. First one is sprint by default. Sprint by default is a mandatory setting. There are very, very few situations where walking will be better than sprinting, and if you turn on sprint by default, you will eliminate an action that you have to press every time you start moving forward. It's a noticeable improvement, and I highly, highly, highly recommend you have sprint by default on. It is essentially mandatory. Um, some of these other settings like toggle sprint, you know, sprint cancel reloading are 
less of a big deal. Tap to search, I would say overall for most of you should have on. It just eliminates the risk that you let go too early and you don't open the chest in time and you lose the gun to somebody else, right? So I recommend you have that on. Um, I haven't really heard of anyone running toggle targeting, but I suppose there's not really a problem with it. And the reset building choice actually isn't super relevant for both keyboard and controller anymore. As a keyboard, you just press your wall piece, floor piece, stair piece, and it goes to there instantly. So that's basically irrelevant. And with controller, builder pro, build immediately, not a big deal. I just keep it on. So when you go into build mode, it defaults to wall. It, it doesn't matter that much, but uh, just out of convention, I keep it on. Obviously, you want aim assist on. And then um, here, in terms of other general settings, there's not a whole lot. Um, obviously, builder pro, build immediately is mandatory. And then auto source consumables to the right. For most of you, that's going to be helpful. So most people put their consumables to the right. If you put your consumables to the left for some reason, then just keep it off, I suppose. And one thing to note here is these two settings, auto open doors and auto pick up weapons. I tend to run auto pick up weapons um, in other projects, but in EZFN, I don't turn it on in Season 7 because this can introduce slot glitch and make it more likely you'll start losing slots. So in Season 7 specifically, I actually do keep it off. And I don't do auto open doors as it can create weird situations where you're trying to use the doors cover. It'll open the door and then you get blasted in the face of the pump. So you could have this on, but I generally keep it off as those situations you're, you know, giving yourself a disadvantage. The one thing though is with this setting, if you make a bunch of mistakes and tend to edit a lot of doors on accident, then maybe it would make sense to have on. Um, in terms of replays, replays can reduce your FPS. If you want to have them on, uh, you can. Sometimes they're not working, so you'd have to test like having it on and see if the replays actually work. I think it's worked at one point, but I haven't checked in a long time, so it could be broken at this point. Then finally, I just want to have a note on um, visualized sound effects. So visualized sound effects in Season 8 is an interesting choice, as it will eliminate directional audio, but you will have the visualized cues. In Season 7, I would overall say for most people, it's not worth having on as it mutes your audio entirely. So you still get an advantage when seeing vehicles and that kind of thing, but you won't be able to tell what guns people are firing. I just think it's not worth it. Now, obviously, if you don't have a way of getting sound, of course, turn on visualized sound effects. But if you do have a way of getting decent sound, I would overall say for most people, I would recommend keeping it off. And with that, I hope this video was helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.